What do Europeans think of Belarus? What is their awareness of the processes taking place in the country? We address these questions to Jakob Wollenstein, the head of Konrad Adenauer Stiftung's Belarus office, who has recently published an article National Identity Against External Pressure, trying to analyze Belarus's external and internal policy. Mr. Wallenstein, you know Belarus quite well and have a lot of experience working with the country. Uh, how it is possible to assess Belarus's perception in the West? Because uh, for so many years the country was so-called terra incognita for many Europeans. Uh, I think what you say is very true that still to many people Belarus is somewhat of a white spot on the map. But as we like to point out, this is not a white spot on the real map, but it's rather a white spot in their mental map. So people just don't know a lot about Belarus. I think, first of all, it's important to differentiate that the West, uh, obviously, de depending on how you define it, also has a lot of different uh, areas and countries. If you go, for example, if you take the European Union as part of the West, so the three neighboring countries of Belarus, uh, Lithuania, Latvia and Poland, obviously have a lot more of an image of Belarus than, let's say, Portugal or the United States, uh, again, with differentiated uh, impressions if you go there. I think um, so. It's, what comes together is, first of all, a non-understanding. So people just don't know a lot about Belarus. On the other hand, you have stereotypes, unfortunately, um, many of them negative. I would say that among these stereotypes, you have uh, some which are not, not specifically towards Belarus, but rather towards Eastern Europe. Um, so seeing it as a post-Soviet country, um, having the association of it being um, an autocratic state or even uh, the, uh, the term dictatorship will come to mind. And then there are specific associations with Belarus, uh, for example, about President Lukashenko as a, a prominent figure. And I think at the moment what is happening, uh, the repressions and the protests will only confirm uh, people's stereotypes about this being uh, a country with an autocracy. On the other hand, um, what we also see is that some things that are actually associated with Belarus um, or come from Belarus are not associated to this in people's mind. If, if you take people like um, uh, Mitskevich or Mark Chagall or even Kostyushko, which are all born in Belarus, people might know their names uh, in the West but would not associate this uh, with Belarus. Even uh, things like the Minsk Agreement, uh, I have uh, heard people say that, oh, we know the Minsk Agreement, but we didn't realize it was Belarus. So people often don't make this connection. I think it's also connected to Belarusian mentality, um, which over centuries of, of war and being in the middle of rivalry uh, has learned to keep the head down. So don't be too outspoken about yourself uh, because it might be safer. Um, but I think also there's a positive edge to this that uh, stereotypes can change. Uh, there is an example to this that very recently uh, we got new uh, data about the Polish-German uh, relationship and over the 10 uh, last years uh, the, um, the understanding about Poland in Germany has grew, grown and improved very, very much. So we see that um, when there is connections, when there's an open border, people interact, uh, bad stereotypes or ignorance uh, can be changed very positively. And Belarus has a lot to offer, and I think it would be very good for Belarus um, to also show this more, for people to be proud and talk about this. The European culture and heritage, even the Soviet heritage can be used for tourism, the IT sector, uh, in the economy, nature, also the political role uh, in uh, negotiating peace. I think there's a lot to offer which can be used to change this uh, ignorance about Belarus to a more positive and a more realistic image. The country is becoming more involved in solving uh, problems of mutual concern. I mean, uh, Ukrainian crisis, combating illegal migrations. Could it mean that the role of uh, Belarus in European foreign policy could be increasing? Well, first of all, it has been increasing over the last five years. I think this is something which has been seen and appreciated uh, very much that Belarus has been moving to this, um, one could say, center position between um, the NATO on the one hand and um, uh, the, the alliances that are mostly dominated by Russia on the other hand as uh, a meeting place, as a country that wants to be neutral on certain issues. I think this has been appreciated, the Minsk agreement uh, as just one outstanding uh, token of this, also the role of Belarus uh, in terms of uh, arms control has been appreciated. I've recently spoken to a German military representative who said this is very good and trustful, uh, this area of cooperation, also in contrast uh, to what the assessment about the cooperation with Russia would be. Um, and I think also the trust building uh, towards NATO, for example, in maneuvers like Zapat 17, this has been appreciated. I think the question um, how much this role can still grow and be increased um, will depend on a few factors. For example, first of all, that Belarus needs to uh, be able to keep this position, um, which is an asset that it can talk both uh, 
trustfully to Russia and uh, to NATO countries. Um, and this has been growing over the last years. We see, especially with the United States, that these relationship um, that this relationship has been has been improving. I think for the Western uh, sector or the vector uh, to improve, I think it will be necessary to um, see steps of the country moving towards democracy in small steps, as, for example, Foreign Minister McKay keeps saying that the, the goal remains the same, but it's small steps, or at least no major backslide. I think this will be important for Minsk uh, to retain this role. Also, the Astravitz issue between Lithuania and Belarus uh, would have to be solved at some point in order for this role uh, to grow significantly. Um, and um, third, but not least, uh, the question whether Minsk will be able to identify concrete uh, steps uh, and a role for itself um, that goes beyond this negotiating position only between in the Ukraine conflict. Uh, there has been talk about a new Helsinki process. There has been talk about Minsk wanting to assume a role as a conflict mediator. Um, something could go beyond this, but if there's something specific uh, that Minsk could add in the upcoming years, I think this would be very helpful as an asset to increase this role. Uh, depending on its uh, geographical position or uh, geographical location, Belarus often became a battlefield between uh, different uh, invaders. What, in your opinion, are the main challenges uh, for Belarus's uh, sovereignty nowadays? I would say there um, is main, uh, mainly three issues that would uh, be necessary to strengthen in order for the, the sovereignty uh, to be strengthened. Uh, first of all, is having a strong economic basis. A country has to be economically um, self-sufficient or at least um, potent uh, to a certain degree um, to be able uh, to be fully sovereign. Um, so this means that in the long run, it will have to extend uh, its economic base, for example, in the IT sector, but also reforms at some point um, will be necessary in order to have a strong perspective uh, for the industry and also for the young workforce to stay in the country and to see an economic um, perspective. Secondly, I think which is most obvious is building strong partnerships and reducing threats throughout the diversification of its foreign policy. This has been uh, Minsk's strategy, this uh, multi-vector policy over the last years. Um, so retaining a good relationship with Russia and, um, and the countries of the Eurasian Economic Union, but on the other hand, uh, keeping a good relationship with the European Union. And this goes back to uh, what I already said, that at the moment, uh, the situation with democracy will be important um, to not have a major backslide, to retain the strong vector uh, with the European Union. And thirdly, of course, um, regarding the economics, um, Belarus has been a building political and economic partnership uh, with China, for example. I think this is a, is a good approach to diversify, but it has to be careful in order not to tr go into a trap of a new dependency uh, from this partner. And the last factor, the third one, will be the population. I think for a country to be fully sovereign, it has to have the population on board to have what we call resilience. So a country, that, a population that identifies uh, with the country that is ready to defend it, um, not only in a military sense, but in a, um, a societal sense that identifies and that goes hand in hand with the uh, country's leadership. And I think if you look into uh, sociology, Belarusians to a very strong degree do uh, agree that they want to be a sovereign country and see their own national identity as something to be preserved. And I think, um, but for this to be strengthened, uh, the government should engage even in more dialogue and give more spaces for the society to be a factor of it all. The country declared multi-rector foreign policy, but we could hear quite often that uh, Belarus has to choose between uh, East and West. Is it really the matter of choice or the country could find uh, the balance between these two poles? I think putting a country to an artificial choice uh, that it does not want itself would be something uh, which is dangerous at best. Um, if you look into um, polling, so what people uh, would say themselves in terms of geopolitical orientation, uh, you will find that Belarusians to a very strong degree want to have good relations with both the European Union and Russia, about 75%. And this does not depend only on the question whether they would prefer um, a political model like the one in the European Union or the one in Russia, but they say we are a country which has about equ equally long borders with the European Union and Russia, and also a history which has been coined by influences, um, sometimes domination, but also a peaceful coexistence with both sides to a certain degree. And so Belarusians themselves want to have good relations with both sides, and nobody should force upon them to make an artificial choice which is not theirs.
Belarus across the globe in nine languages, 24-7, online, FM, and satellites. Radio Belarus International, bringing Belarus closer.